judge. Only on our side are we able to give the workers what they truly want prior to repose. Firstly, a few pieces of setup and framing, right? Firstly, on additional pay, our side defines additional pay as a wage that is higher than the minimum wage. There's a small multiplier if workers work beyond their designated hours, for example, 1.2 times. Secondly, the point of the motion should be individual benefit and focus on the individual, the individual's own rights and what these people actually want. And I'll delve into the key stakeholders' incentives later on in my speech. Thirdly, why are labor rights created? Labor rights are created to guarantee utility and to give people basic human rights. Now, moving on to my substantives, two main things I'll tell you in my speech today. One, how this actually maximizes utility and how we do what op wants much better. And two, how this actually uh, helps uh, define the purpose of labor rights and how op disproportionately harms minorities and people in need. Now, first substantive, right? Now, on how it maximizes utility and how we do what op wants much better. So let's uh, have an example first, right? So for example, uh, what if I'm a single father who wants to send my kids to university? I want to prioritize my family over myself because I want the best for my children. So it's important for both prop and op to recognize that most of the stakeholders in today's debate are blue collar workers who do labor jobs, like for example, construction workers, janitors, cashiers, etc. They often have low education backgrounds, so they have no other choice to devote to the society and earn money than by doing hard labor. So in the status quo, there are actually hourly limits, right? So these people can't choose how much they want to work, even if they're physically capable, even if they want to earn money, because there is a hard cap set on this in the status quo. So these people usually find ways to bypass the system anyways by working several jobs. Like for example, taking a part-time job, I might work as a cashier in one supermarket for six hours and then work as a cashier in another supermarket for another six hours and then earn 12, 12 hours of hourly pay in total, right? We say most blue collar workers are underpaid so they can't support their family. This is how desperate these people are to actually gain higher income. So we see op rights in today's debate. Op also wants to give these workers rights, i.e. let them rest, right? However, they're actually ignoring the fact that these workers have different priorities and their families' rights, i.e. to a better education, to proper health care, probably matter more to them than their own personal, like, quote, quote, rights, like having one day off. Like some of these workers would probably want to have like 500 more dollars as opposed to taking one more day of mandatory leave. Now then second substantive, right? On how labor rights are made for people to get to choose what they want and op actually disproportionately harms the minority and people who are actually in need. Now two layers to this. One, what is the point of a labor union? As already established earlier in my speech today, um, the point of the labor union- workers to choose what they want, negotiate for better pay, better working conditions, and better benefits. Before I move on, I'll take your point. But doesn't the government have the right to restrict if the individuals are likely to make irrational decisions? Um, I'll, I'll talk about that later on in my speech, right? So as I said, better pay, better working conditions, and better benefits. Firstly, we said better pay is achieved better on our side. My second speaker will elaborate. How because we have a small multiplier on the amount of money that people get, these people are actually better able to get more money from having from working the same amount of hours and are better able to support their family. Now, answering back to your PUI, right? We said these workers are actually so desperate to earn money because their families are desperately in need, right? We said these workers will probably like disregard the, the government in, in the first place because they'll actually try to find ways to bypass the system by having multiple jobs at the same time. I've already talked about this early in my speech. I don't see how this is mutually exclusive. Now, second layer that about better working conditions. As I already talked about, blue collar workers don't often have a good or like better education they don't have a choice to get better working conditions, so this is out of the debate. Thirdly, about better benefits then, we think this doesn't matter because the scope of a debate is individual, and op can't assume that every single worker wants their labor rights, right? They can't generalize workers in this way. So we see that op is actually taking this away from people by deciding for them. In the status quo, people uh, in op's world, people don't have a say in what they want right now, right? Op is using the name of rights to take these exact same rights away from people. We don't think this is proportionate for the for the harm for the minority. So judge, both for a world of equity, both for a world where we're actually able to help the millions of underpaid workers out there, vote prop, never been powdered to propose. Judge, workers in minimum, minimum wage jobs have zero power. They're struggling and desperate to opt into short-term financial gains in order to survive. They're willing to do anything to take on the most dangerous jobs, even to stay employed and gain as much income as possible. This desperation gives a huge difference in power structures in the workplace, giving employers the power to leverage these desperate workers into dangerous conditions. Um, before moving on to our team's two arguments, I'll, I'd like to start with some rebuttals. So, sorry, government is portraying waiving labor rights for extra money as an autonomous 
choice, but in reality, it is an illusory choice. These people are not driven by individual choice of uh, as an individual choice of convenience. It's literally an economic coercion which drives them to strip strip off their rights to work in the most dangerous jobs, which no one will take. No individual would autonomously trade off their rights and save working conditions for an extra two dollars, as their desperation is being leveraged by employers to endanger these workers and take advantage of their vulnerability. So now moving on to my first argument about why it is unjust. Two, two points of analysis here. Firstly, why do, do these later labor rights exist in the first place? For the protection and the well-being of workers, the government has the obligation to ensure poor and marginalized workers will like be treated correctly in the workplace, right? Such as prevention from burnout. And it is mandatory because workers, especially poor workers, are not rational enough to, to determine if they can work more or not. They Because they only care about money, they prioritize it over their well-being. And it, it is the government's obligation to make sure that these workers make rational decisions. And then to add on why this motion is not legitimate. We say that the government's duty to ensure that people are able to make safe choices. For example, government is justified in restricting individual choice when many citizens are structurally incapable of, of exercising rational choices in desperate or urgent situations when you feel that you don't not you don't have enough time to think uh, that is when people make the wrong decisions these people are vulnerable in this situation especially when the employees of these employees see how desperate their workers are these work like these work efficiency and profit bo oriented bosses will manipulate and abuse their influence by gradually lowering the price knowing that the workers are very reliant reliant on them for income workers are not choosing from a menu of equal options they're literally being coerced by their economic circumstances to prioritize immediate financial survival over over well -being. Now moving on to our second argument about how implementing this policy leaves room for exploitation and bargaining power. We see that labor rights are the safety net that protects individuals from potential exploitation. So government is taking away this, this from people. The most vulnerable workers, poor and desperate, are being pressured to give up protections and save themselves from ex from abuse and exploitation. Sad government doesn't seem to understand the significant power imbalance between employees and workers. It's obvious that employees will take advantage financially, desperate or less, less informed workers. Workers facing financial needs will need to opt out for short-term income, and they will un be unable to neg negotiate for the full scope of what they are sacrificing. Reasonable working hours and safe working conditions judge. They're literally sacrificing their protection in a workplace where employers have so much power over them to significantly change their well-being and income. Workers are not in a position of, power, of equal bargaining power. For example, a single struggling parent without savings is less likely to negotiate with an employer who holds huge economic leverage over them. This disproportionately targets low-income workers who don't have the college degrees or qualifications to find and move jobs in the job market. These are people who don't have college degrees, qualifications, they don't have any other options, they don't have any other adequate alternatives which will give them income, right? Their only job, their only decision is to stay in this job. It's easy for them to be pushed around and exploited by employers that already have significant power over them. We also say that this is, this is discriminatory to so the poor since the poor will always have to waive labor rights and do more dangerous jobs. Why? Corporations are more likely to make workers that waive their rights to do harder and harsh job labor works that people don't want to do. They're obviously going to assign people who are desperate for, for like short-term financial gains. They're going to push them into jobs which no one wants to do. Dangerous jobs which could threaten their life because no one wants to do, do these jobs, Judge, but th that will give like employers to leverage their power over them and to like take advantage of their desperation. So this is this will general this will like cause more dangerous jobs to be more general when assigned uh, for people who waiver their labor rights for uh, financial gains. Thank you. Very proud to oppose. Judge, only on our side do we protect the best interests of these workers. Proud to propose. So op um, opposition has stated that um, these workers, many blue collar, many workers will be pressured to choose to waive their labor rights. However, they won't be pressured. They're only given the freedom to choose, the freedom to work more. And essentially, even without this choice, they already have ways around it. Some of these workers might be working multiple jobs, but they don't get as much pay as they will if they're allowed to waive their rights and work for more money. As you have stated, there will be a minimum multiplier, which means that they will get more money by working the same hours that they already do by staying in one job instead of working two or three. Workers need this money to raise their family. They are people, they have families, they have people, they have children to feed, and they need to pay for where they live and what they eat. Moreover, now let me move on to my 
my substantives. First of all, the additional pay is a small multiplier of the original pay. These blue collar workers who have jobs need to get money. And because of individual job hour limits, they need to switch from job to job. While they can now have with this option, stay in the same job and earn more money than they were in the past. So this, so this is an easier way for them to earn a higher income because of their limited education level. It is a quick way to help the situations of some very poor families who can barely even support their own children or themselves because the government can't provide an immediate solution to all poverty. They can't just build lots of public housing out of the ground. These long-term measures that government can implement to prevent poverty takes time and it takes funding, which can't be done immediately. So with these options to waive their labor rights, we are giving blue collared workers who have low education levels chances to improve their livelihoods even slightly for a while while the government attempts to solve the major problem behind this. So sometimes employers might be biased against disadvantaged workers. For example, there are minority, ethnic minority workers who can't get better jobs because in this current society, there's still lots of racism going around employers. And this is a chance for them to use the job they have to get better money for themselves. And many poor people were born in disadvantaged and socially economically impoverished families. In their background, they had to leave school early to find jobs. They don't have enough education qualifications and they can't fund themselves to go back to school now because they're so poor. This is a damage done by birth lottery and you can't change that. So by giving them a chance to waive their labor rights, you're allowing them to have the opportunity to make a choice for themselves, make a choice to choose a better livelihood by making even a slighter, slightly more amount of money every day. Day by day, week by week, month by month, they will slowly accumulate a larger amount of money than they were in the past. This gives them a better life, a better well-being. It increases their income. It, it helps them to be able to support their families by working on public holidays and working over time for more pay. This is giving them a better well-being, a better chance at life. And a better way to pay for expenses that they might not be able to pay for, which means there will be less mortgages, less financial difficulties that are faced by these workers. This is a good option for them all. So judge, vote for an increased income for those in need. Vote for people's best interests. Vote proposition. That According to a proposition's logic, we have to legalize drugs because that's also a choice. But we we ban and we restrict individuals' choice, but individuals are likely to harm themselves and make irrational choices. What that said, three things. Model criticism. Secondly, talk about poor people and how we actually help them. Thirdly, talk about principle and last constructive on how we are able to how they how they determine the whole collective effort. Firstly, a model. A we challenge the very statement that they're going to pay that much a lot of money. Companies have no incentive to get give, give a lot of money more than minimum wage since they know that workers will still work more anyways regardless of the payment. Because these people are so desperate, companies are like to exploit that theory, saying that even if I give you a little money, you're still going to work anyway. They don't have the incentive to give a lot of money in the first place. Proposition does not have to be at to claim that they are going to give them a lot of money. I think that's just not feasible. Secondly, I think the debate is coming up to the stakeholder of poor. Poor usually works with factories without with, with and factories have lack of money already. They have no money to simply give out more than minimum wage to every worker that are willing to work a lot. Hence, we see that the money they will get will be very marginal in the first place. Thirdly, let's just, let's assume their best case. Sure, let's see that they will give more, more money than minimum wage. Our alternative on our worst case is moonlighting, right? Then, why do we still win? I think moonlighting pays better intuitively, also treats you better. Companies just have to prove why it is better to work more, earn less, and get exploited over moonlighting. Just earn more, treat good, and extra job. They tell us that we can slowly accumulate and garner a lot of money. Slowly, slowly, and gradually. This is contradictory because we need immediate money according to their uh, logic in the first place. Secondly, on the question, is the act justified or not? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Firstly, note that our L already proved on how the government's duty to ensure individuals make poor choice doesn't make safe choices. For example, drugs. Drugs don't have any third party harm, but government bans it because people are going to suffer from addiction, health risks, and etc. Right? Similar to this, because removing labor rights makes individuals prone to exploitation, it is justified to restrict rights. Government showed absolutely no engagement to this point. Secondly, the why are individuals likely to make in irrational choices? Government literally proved this point for us. They stated that these people just care about money so much, right? This is literally 
literally this literally proves to you that individuals are likely to just take the offer without considering the what what treatment and exploitation they will get. Last catch on help the poor. Again, note that they have no exclusive benefits. It's the money they earn is very meager, and they literally say that the money, I mean, slowly, slowly, you earn a lot of money at the end of the day. But again, that's a marginal benefit. I think it's better to maintain your well being so that you can perform well during your official working times. If you're working, get part exploitation during the extra working time and get burnout, you work worse during your official times. You're not going to get a lot of money during the extra time, anyways. Hence, the comparative is it is better to just perform well in the official time and get a sustainable source of income rather than gambling and getting exploited and performing work to get the little money, to earn the little marginal money the first day. I think the comparative is on the shorter, long-term and sustainability. Then the third constructive is on how this deteriorates working unions and undermines its power. A, labor rights are created for baseline standards for all workers. By implementing this policy where each worker's term of employment differ, this families of workforce is weakening collective power to resist exploitation. Employers can easily take advantage of this and leverage the fragmentation to completely eradicate union power and limit speed up against employers as a divided workforce is less likely to resist. B. Workers are given the mindset that their short-term financial gains outweigh their labor rights and obligations of fair treatment in the workplace. This clearly demonstrates how easily exploitation will be in the workplace as employers will assign dangerous jobs which no one else wants to take, which with the most lax safety condition, which will be assigned to more like the very vulnerable population, which will do anything for short term money. I think that's the exploitation for more individuals waive their rights. This leads to pushing down working condition, pushing down the consensus as what constitutes as fair working condition, right? Side government is portraying normalizing abusive and exploitative environments and it rolls through your safety and they, people start to accept worse condition. I think poor people are urgent in this situation. We agree. But I think that today's debate is to ensure that these people can get the most stable income and protect them in the first place. I think for that reason, we're proud to oppose. These workers are the most important stakeholders in today's debate. On top, we stand for these workers, and only on our side are we able to fully maximize utility for these workers and benefit them the most. Proud to propose. Today in my speech, I'm going to explain to you why what OP is trying to achieve, which is maximizing utility, we do it better on our side. So judge, what do these workers look like, right? These people are people living in poverty. They're living paycheck by, by paycheck. These people are working four jobs a day just to support their family. We tell you that there are so many obstacles stopping them from getting a better future. This looks like discrimination in society or um this looks like discrimination in society or under education or their inherent financial situation, right? Judge, we tell you that because of these obstacles, they can't work or afford to do other jobs. And if I'm a single mother living in poverty, I can't just become a doctor if I want to, which means that these workers cannot opt out and they have to devote their life to hard labor in order to at least pull their family out of the cracks of today's society and actually sustain their own, uh, sustain their lives, right? So what do these workers actually want, right? Because of the, their inherent situation, I've just explained to you, they would much rather work five more hours than to take a day off and so-called rest. Judge, we've already proved to you down the bench why these workers have unique incentives that they would much rather sacrifice their well-being and health, which which in the status quo, a lot of workers on off are already doing by working several jobs a day. Op is simply just generalizing all of these workers and assuming that they want labor rights. We tell you that these workers care about earning money far more than their own well-being and health. And on our side, at least these workers still get a choice, right? Because let's look at our best case, right? These workers actually get to choose what they want to do. And let's be charitable and take our case at it's worse, right? Even if this choice is a coerced choice and uh, they're act and they're just sacrificing their own health for their family, they're still acting on their best interests and choosing what's the best for them and their family. These workers don't care about the long-term benefits as long as they can get more money in the short term. This is what the workers actually truly want. If only on our we give them more rights. I'll take a few eyes. So you're saying that it's for the best interests of the individuals and and, the, and their families, but how do you know that they're making rational decisions and not, are, are not under economic coercion? I've already told you that even if this choice is a coerced choice, these people, at least they're still acting on their best interests and they're choosing what is best for their own family and themselves. And this is actually what can benefit them in the long term because I'm, if I'm a single father and I want to send my, my child to school, I would much rather sacrifice my own house and earn more money so I can send my child to school in the long term. We tell you that it's actually still better on our side because at least you're helping these people get more money for the same hours they're working. Because as 
I've already explained to you, on op these workers are still working the same, um, or most likely still working the same amount of hours because to bypass this hour limit, a lot of these workers work several jobs a day. So they're still working the same amount of hours. Op's whole case hangs on the assumption that all of these workers want labor rights like a day off, but they never realize that they're still doing that in the, S in, in the status quo every anyway. And the status quo has hour limits, so they can't choose how much they want to work, even if they want to earn more. And thirdly, most color, most blue collar workers are underpaid, so they can't support their family. So why are companies more willing to pay? Pay more than the minimum wage on our side, right? Because firstly, we tell you that these companies are able to earn more money with more workers because uh, with this policy, we're able to attract many more workers. So why is this a case, right? Let's say I'm a CEO of a construction company, right? So the faster I get the job and the more money I, I earn in the long term. So as a company, I have the incentive to attract more workers to work for me so I can get the job done quicker, right? So judge, only on our side do we give these workers what they truly want. Only on our side do we give, uh, do we give the workers the rights they actually truly want what op is trying to do we do it better proud to propose thank you judge moving directly onto our first clash which side offers autonomy to these people judge the other side constantly keeps on mentioning and talking as if these people have a choice but to work or not but not only are these people completely blinded exploited lied to now the other side wants to exploit them as well let's say that the employer does find out that these people are willing to take extra shifts they're going to be manipulated gaslit and even threatened to take that job opportunity because the company needs more workers. If the government does intervene, which only happens on our side, that would mean that these people are given a chance to pause for a moment, look at their surroundings, the sad life that they are currently being pushed into, and make a better decision. If we compare the government and these people, the government is not only is not the desperate poor single father who has to make a decision within two minutes to report back to their company. Now, if the other side wants to talk about urgency, we will elaborate this in our second clash, but for now, we will tell you this. We already gave you two alternatives. First of all, the government in most states and countries already fulfills their purpose. They give food stamps, shelters, and they help people get jobs and offer free schooling, etc. Another alternative is to once again like partake in moonlighting. So we would like to tell you what real autonomy is. Autonomy is not simply stretching and exploring your rights. Autonomy is knowing your rights, understanding to what degree you should utilize your freedom and being able to make rational decisions to your advantage without harming anyone else, which only takes place in our, one side, our side. Freedom, we would like to tell you that freedom isn't freedom when it involves gambling with your life, right? Not only that, especially with different priorities like the other side mentioned, we have two points to this. First of all, those priorities are heavily distorted. They are not willingly choosing money over health. They have no choice because they acknowledge that their family is relying on them. If they're blinded, it's not them making the decision and it's not their best interest when they are not the one thinking. Also, however, in the end, people are working to live and people live to be happy. Working all of these jobs creates an illusion that these people are being productive, efficient, and being closer to reaching happiness. But the only thing that they will reach at the end of the line is the same poverty that they have been facing the whole time. Now, moving on to our second clash of who better protects these people. The other side talked about additional pay and people's rights to do what they want. However, this is simply nonsensical for multiple reasons. If we talk about the government's responsibility, once again, they are supposed to protect their citizens. They create laws and rights so that people have the ability to protect themselves. But as our previous speaker had stated already, when the rights are used to harm themselves, it should be limited. Also, the other side said that people would opt for $500 rather than one day of work. Judge, this is not what their life looks like. These people would be working their heads off every single second of their life for a few extra dollars. $500 is like from a utopian society. Also, the company earning more money doesn't mean that you will pay better. Look at all of these businesses that exploit their workers, right? Shein, Timu, Amazon, and all of the other factory-based companies and etc. The other side's focus is on utility, hence they do not care truly for all of these people living in poverty. Now, especially since their family is in need, they are blinded and exploited. If these people see how desperate for money these workers are, this once again shows the worker that they would do anything for an extra penny. This makes it extremely easy for employers to give them dangerous jobs, such as unsafe factory environments, unstable construction sites, etc., since they know they take the job. Now, moving on to a comparative of long-term, short-term, and as well as the level of harm cost. First of all, we would like to tell you that humans are by nature gravitated towards both focusing on something that comes to them faster, right? On the other side, people are going to be exploited, they're going to be burnt out, and their lives are on extremely thin ice. Even if the other side really needed this money, giving up their rights is not even the last resort. If you needed extra money, we would say this once again, partake in moonlight 
moonlighting. We did not promote either moonlighting or giving up your rights like this, but if you really had to choose, moonlighting would be much what much better. Why? If you work extra time and work a total of 10 hours and earn $40 because the um, employer cut off your salary of it, you could work a total of 10 hours through moonlighting and working like different jobs and earn double as well as gain more experience to put on your resume. Moonlighting leads to people being able to work without giving up their dignity, safety, and cost of labor. Thank you. If it was the case where where workers will be fine even without labor rights, why would labor rights even exist? Debate is about trade-off, where you accept some harms and demonstrate some benefit and weigh it. Proposition cannot say that removing labor rights have no harms but only benefit. That's just being greedy. And like one thing before anything, right? Really, really poor people don't even work because they're sick from no medical treatment and harsh condition. Hence, the debate is not on the most poor person, but it's on the people that are poor, but not like you starve tomorrow, people. Hence, gain, garnering money is important, but long-term well-being is also an important thing in today's debate, right? Then, I want to talk about this. I think money is at the end of the day for happiness, right? Then, I want to question opposition, proposition one this question. Will your, will your family be happy if you that make an extra $10 or even $20, but you have scars all over your face and broken legs from hard, arduous, arduous working and exploitation. I think that is not the case. I think happiness is better achieved under our case. One issue, I think this debate comes up to one issue of which side is able to be beneficial towards the poor. But let me talk about the legitimacy of restricting rights. Proposition talks as we cannot restrict rights in under any content, then we should not, like, we we should not we should also respect freedom of speech so we should like ban those defamation laws we should uh, allow drugs and etc i think that's very very radical for a proposition to speak like that first is one issue of what is better for the worker itself three points firstly which side ensures the well-being of workers proposition literally dropped this point from our LO speech to the web speech we have constantly emphasized on how workers suffer from exploitation government shows absolutely no engagement secondly which side provides a more stable financial situation firstly i think that video already compared this but note that the additional money they earn it's not even as big. Factories don't have enough money to pay $500 to every worker. But even if it is a lot of money, our alternatives such as moonlighting, which is an official job, will pay you more. Lastly, I want to talk about happiness. Note that again, money is for happiness. Which side is able to bring happiness is the main issue. Then I think happiness is better under our side because these people can spend time with family. These people can come back. I think that's better. Even if you, you can make additional $10, more $10, I think you're not happy if this person is suffering for these people, for, for suffering and etc. We prefer judge up today contradicts themselves time and time again they say they want to protect workers rights by literally locking and restraining them in a jail cell where they are limited to measly working hours minimum wage that's barely enough for one person to survive let alone a whole family and force them to go find loopholes in the system because they're not giving them what they actually need to support their family's life maybe up thinks we're the ones throwing workers in that jail cell but the cell that's worth lottery can never be demolished in the short term we are just expanding workers choice giving them more things they have freedom over and not just limiting them to one piece of stale bread so proud to propose so a few strategic flaws that up up makes today in their speeches today right one firstly all they say that governments have the obligation to make sure that workers make rational decisions so what is the response to this? A, this is just a problem-solution mismatch. Even in our worst case, in these workers' eyes, the true rational decision is sacrificing themselves in order to make money to support their families and they will overwork themselves, right? B, I don't see how this is mutually exclusive because even in your world, workers will still find a way to bypass the system and work multiple jobs anyway. So if this incentive is so symmetrical on each side, here's why it's still better on our side. The simple answer is that we give them more money. This leads to OP's second strategic flaw. Second strategic flaw of OP is that they're being extremely uncharitable towards us, right? They tell us that, oh, companies won't be incentivized to pay more multipliers. First is taking us at our worst, but it's okay. They already proved we went on their grounds too, because my third speaker already responded to this by saying that multipliers still work out because companies want to generate more income by getting the job done faster, right? So anyway, this tells the main clash of today's debate is autonomy. Even if we debate on their grounds and premises, OP never actually proves why they give them better autonomy and solve the problem. They tell us that, oh, food stamps, right? But up just assumes this can help the poor. But how do you explain the hundreds of people camping under, under bridges and the thousands of people sleeping on benches every day? Governments don't have enough money from taxpayers to support all these people when they're spending money on other things. We see that OP only refutes us at service level, saying that workers would rather take $500 than having one day of mandatory leave. But even if this is actually exaggerated, the essence of the argument stands. These people are living in poverty. OP cannot just deny and scroll away from this fact. This tells us that happiness matters. But we see that when these people are living from paycheck to paycheck, have families to support, OP cannot prove that they care about having one less go on their face when their family's future and health is on the eye line. Only on our side are we able to provide, provide opportunities for the oppressed and the minority never ever been prouder to propose.